Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how you can go ahead and add your widgets as well as charts or any, you know, widgets you have to your resource pages. So by resource pages, I mean, for example, on uh, this list resource page or on your edit page, view page, or even on your uh, create page, you can actually have your widgets display here as well. So it's very easy to do and something you guys have been asking me since I created the widgets episode. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that now. Before you follow along, make sure you have at least one widget to test this out with. And if you don't know how to do it, I already have videos covering how to add charts as well as stat widgets. I'll make sure to add those videos to the YouTube card. You can also check out the videos on my channel. So let's get right into it. Now, in order to add the widget to our resource, we first need to go ahead and find the page for that specific resource. How do you find it? Well, if you take a look at our filament resources folder, there is going to be obviously a resources folder. And then inside that, for every resource, we are going to have that resources name, let's say a user resource.php, as well as a folder or directory of the same name, right? So we have a user resource directory and a user resource PHP file. Now, if you want to add the widgets, we need to go ahead and find that the resources directory, right? So let's say user resource. And if you open it up, there should be another directory of pages. And then inside that, you're going to find three files by default, right? And each of these files basically uh, are correspond to one of these pages here. So if we take a look at our user resource, we have a list and it is managed by this list users PHP file. This edit user obviously is for the edit page and then create is for the create page. So if you want to add a widget to any of these, we need to find its corresponding file and then basically register to widget there. So let's start off with the list users page, which is going to be this page over here. And you can add widgets on two places. You can add them on the header, basically above your table. And then you can also do it to the, at the footer, which is obviously below the table. So that's the two positions we have for it. And in order to register it, guys, you need to go ahead and override two methods. And the method names, I'm going to just copy this get header actions, which is going to be here by default. And basically the methods are get header widgets, as you guys can see. So that's the one you need to override. And let me get rid of this. And it returns an array. So that's the method definition. And then if you want to add it to the footer, footer, it's going to be exactly the same. But instead of get header widgets, it is going to be get uh, footer widgets. All right, same exact thing. And again, you can have both of them at the same time as well. Now, right now, these are empty. So if I go back, we are obviously not going to see any changes. But if you want to add a widget, all you have to do is just register it here. So uh, I already showed you guys that I already have two widgets on this project. So if I show you guys the widgets folder, I have this test widget and I have a chart. So let's go ahead and add this test widget. And in order to add it, all you have to do is like just like this. So reference that class and do uh, double colon colon class. And that's all you have to do. And it will go ahead and register it for you. Also make sure you are importing it. So as you can see, it's already imported. And that's it. So now if I have done that, if I go back and I do a reload, as you guys can see, it is now showing my widget at the top. And you can register as many widgets as you like over here. So it's that easy. And if I want to go ahead and show it at the footer, it is going to be the exact same process. So I'll just go ahead and put it instead of on the get header widgets method, I'll do it inside the get footer widgets. So let's save this. And if I do a reload, now we should have another one at the bottom, right? Just like that. So super easy. Uh, again, it also works with charts. So if I want to do a chart, I'll go ahead and I do the exact same thing with my chart widget. And let's save that. Let's go back. And as you guys can see, we are seeing the chart as well. Obviously, it doesn't look that good. But generally, the most common use case is you're going to either have a chart or maybe you're going to have a couple of these widgets as well. And again, charts do work at the footer level as well. So if I move this uh, down, it is going to also be visible there. As you guys can see, so it's that easy. Now, what about the other pages? So what if you want to show a widget on the edit or the create page? Can we do that? Well, the answer is yes. So I'm going to remove the chart widget for now because it's a little bit too big. It's taking too much space. So let's go ahead and add a widget inside our edit page. It's actually just as easy. So let's go ahead and open it up. Right now, we don't have a widget. Well, the edit page or the edit user is exactly identical to the list users, right? So it kind of has the same definition. So we can go ahead and copy this get header widget and get footer widgets. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it, move over to our edit user PHP file and paste it over here. All right. That's all I have to do. Of course, I need to import my widget as well, but everything else stays the same. And that's the process that easy. So if I go back and I do a reload now, as you guys can see, we are seeing the widgets again. So it's that easy. And if you want to add it to the, uh, to the create page, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, I already have it co copied. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the create user PHP file for my users, paste it here, import the test widget. And now we should be good to go. So let's do a reload and we can see it in this page as well. So it's that easy guys to go ahead and basically add your widgets to any specific page you want. Okay. And again, it will work with any other resource as well, right? Now, one more additional thing you may want to do guys is specifically on the edit or view pages. Let's say I'm editing this user here. You may want to show the statistics for that user, maybe the number of blog posts by that user or the number of comments by that user. So in order for you to do that, you need to be able to access that user's ID or model in your widget file. Well, Filament actually allows us to do that. So let me show you guys how we can go ahead and do it. So in order to test it out, I'm going to go ahead and create a new stats widget. I don't want to change the existing one. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up the terminal. And I already have the code here, but let's go ahead and type it in. Uh, PHP artisan make filament widget. And let's run this. So I'm going to name this one be, let's say, user stats widget. And then for the type of widget, I'm going to go ahead and click stats overview, it could be any of the widgets. And then last but not least, it's going to ask you what resource would you like to create this in. Now, technically, you can leave this empty, and it is going to create it inside our widgets folder. But in this case, because I'm going to be kind of uh, this widget is only going to be for users, I'm going to go ahead and put it inside our user resource. Okay, so it's a bit easier to tell. And so also because uh, if we are going to if this widget is going to depend on the user model, we don't want to accidentally register it on any other pages, right? Otherwise, we're going to get an error. So I think it's better to put it inside the user resource. So you, you immediately know, hey, this widget, you know, is only for user pages. So let's hit enter. And then I'm going to also put it on the admin page. Okay, that's it. So now that it has created it. Let's go back. And by the way, it gave us a message that make sure to register the widget inside the user resource. Obviously, I already covered how to do it. And if you reload, everything should still work the same. So let's go ahead and on our edit page, actually register this new widget. So it, we named it a user stats widget, and I'm going to import it. And if you import it, it's an empty widget, so nothing's going to happen. Let's go ahead and add some data here. So I'm going to go ahead and say stat make and let's say name for the user's name. And for now, I'll just hard code it to test. Okay, so if we reload, obviously, we are now able to see the new widget. So what I'm going to do is basically go ahead, access this user model inside our widget, and display that user's name. Okay, and in this case, the user's name is actually test. Let's change it to uh, Hello YouTube. So we know it is working. Alright, so let's go ahead and now make it so we display Hello YouTube here. And I think I got logged out because I edited my own account. So let's go ahead and open it up again. So let's go ahead and update that. Now in order to access the model, you need to go ahead and add a new property. And this property needs to be public of type question mark, basically nullable, and then the type of model you're accessing. So in this case, we are using our widget inside our user model, right, or our user resource. So I'm going to go ahead and make this be of type user. Okay, so if you had this inside a comment resource, or edit comment page, then this has to be your comment model, whatever your model name is, okay. And then for the name of the property, you need to go ahead and name it record. Okay, that's it. That's all we have to do. And once you have set this up, guys, the rest is going to be very easy. So if you want to access your model, just go ahead and access this record property. So I'm going to come over here and say, this record name. That's it. So this is going to give me access to it. And I'm going to be able to access, you know, relationships, anything I need on that model. So let's save this up, guys, I'm going to go back, do a quick reload. And as you guys can see, now we are getting Hello YouTube, right? 
Now, let me check my user uh, model, see if I have anything else on it that I could use. So as you can see, guys, I also have two relationships on it. I have a posts and comments relationship. Let's say I want to show the number of posts that this user has. Well, we could technically go ahead inside here, get the posts relationship and maybe do, you know, account and display the number of posts this user have. So let's say num posts, just like that. I'm not sure actually if this user has any posts, but still, well, it actually has one. Okay. So as you can see now on our edit page, we can go ahead and show statistics for that specific user uh, just like this. So the process is very simple, guys. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer you guys' comments uh, if I know the answer. As always, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.